Hello, my ladies, we meet again. <laughs> Don't you just love the fact that each video tutorial gives you another dose of what you need to get to your destination? I tend to think of each lesson as adding more gasoline to your tank. I guess I think of your tank as your fund of knowledge. And I know that most of the women who watch my videos realize that they knew absolutely nothing before they discovered this education. Their tanks were on empty. They were stalled out. So here we have Minnie Mouse in her convertible. But let's change her name to Minnow Mouse <laughs> to make her one of us. You know, she and I both have great big bows in our hair. <laughs> so. Before getting this education, Minnow Mouse was stalled out. But as you learn more and more here at Menopause University, you start filling your tank of knowledge. And if you watch all the videos in order, get my book, watch the webinar or DVD, or have a consultation with me, you'll end up with a full tank. And I assure you that a full tank of factual information on menopause will take you anywhere you want to go. So just be sure to keep coming back, because just when you think you know it all, you'll run out of gas. This education encompasses more than you could ever possibly imagine. And women make all sorts of mistakes when they watch a few videos and try to manage their menopause with just that little bit of information. It's like trying to drive a long distance on a nearly empty tank of gas. If you want to take a shortcut, schedule a consultation. That is the only way you'll still get where you want to go without having to take a lot of time to get there and without running out of gas. Today we're continuing our discussion of your menopause management options for preventing all three of the big diseases of estrogen deficiency. They include heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's. And our topic for today is the vitamin, mineral, and supplement options for doing so. I've already given you separate videos on all these things in each individual unit for each disease. Video 174 presented the options for preventing a heart attack. Videos 217, 218, and 219 presented the options for preventing osteoporosis. And video 271 presented the options for preventing Alzheimer's. What we'll be doing today is indicating which of these products overlap in being able to prevent more than one of the three diseases. Because in addition to having a full tank of gas, you also want to get the best mileage. If you discover that there really is no overlap and that you have to take each individual vitamin, mineral, or supplement for each individual disease, you'll be driving all over town trying to find them all. And that could take a lot of time and cause you to run out of gas. So let's see what kind of mileage you can get out of using vitamins, minerals, and supplements for preventing all three diseases. This video is important because it's so common to hear women talk about a product that promises to meet all their needs when in fact it falls very short of doing so. I want you to have factual knowledge, not false hopes. In my book, whether you have the first edition or the second edition, all the information on these options is in the individual chapters for each disease, but it does not present them as I will here today. Let's start by putting this whole category of vitamins, minerals, and supplements into perspective in terms of what the category can and cannot do. Regardless of whether or not you use any of these products, always remember how the industry that makes them functions. First and foremost, and more important than anything else, is the simple fact that the entire vitamin, mineral, and supplement industry is entirely unregulated. 
This means that there are no standards that the manufacturer has to meet in order to market the product. Well, with no standards, it means that there is no consistency. And with no consistency, you cannot be sure that you're getting what the label says you're getting. Anyone can market a vitamin, mineral, or supplement with no need for any kind of licensing or education. You can go out right now and take empty capsules and fill them with dust, dirt, and sugar and sell them as vitamins, minerals, or supplements. And because there is no regulation, nobody can stop you. Second, all of these products that come in a bottle are isolated, which means that your body does not utilize them in the same way it utilizes these same nutrients in the form of food. So the benefit you get from any vitamin, mineral, or supplement from a bottle is minimal. Third, while people tend to refer to these products as natural, nothing could be farther from the truth. There is no way you can put the natural form of a vitamin, mineral, or supplement in a bottle. They are natural in foods that naturally contain them. But they are 100% synthetic when they are in a bottle. And while merely being synthetic does not make them bad, it does have a huge effect on their half-lives. You see, synthetic vitamins, minerals, and supplements degrade very rapidly over time. So, by the time the manufacturer puts them in the bottle, and caps the bottle, and puts the bottle on the truck, and transports it to a store, and the owner takes it off the truck, conducts inventory, puts it on the store shelf where it sits until you buy it, and then sits some more until you actually take it, there may be very little of the active product left. So you don't ever get the full benefit of any synthetic vitamin, mineral, or supplement that comes even close to the effect of that item in food. And fourth, the most important limitation to remember about this entire category is that it is insufficient by itself for preventing, arresting, or treating any disease. You know, there's actually some irony here, and that's because while these products are isolated, you cannot use them in isolation for preventing any of the three big diseases of estrogen deficiency. See, this is where women get themselves into trouble. Instead of confining their use of these products to simply maintaining already good health, which is prevention, they try to use them to correct bad health, which are intervention and fixing. So the most that any vitamin, mineral, or supplement can do for your heart is to keep your already plaque-free heart arteries plaque-free. And the most they can do for your bones is keep your already dense bones dense. And the most they can do for your brain is to keep your already intact brain intact. So let's call these the four basic principles of all vitamins, minerals, and supplements. They are unregulated, isolated, synthetic, and insufficient in and of themselves. And the key to these principles is that you have to use these options with the expectation that they are very limited in their abilities to function in the realm of disease. They belong in the realm of wellness. So let me show you the various vitamins, minerals, and supplements that I presented in the individual disease units to see which ones can help benefit prevention of which diseases. Oh, but just for kicks, let's consider this a quiz question first. Which of the following items in the category of vitamins, minerals, and supplements is beneficial in helping to keep all three organ systems affected by estrogen deficiency healthy? A. Calcium. B. Vitamin B6. C. CoQ10. D. Vitamin C. E. Omega-3 fatty acids. Magnesium, G, vitamin B9, H, vitamin D, I, zinc, J, A, F, and I above, K, C, E, and H above. 
L, B, D, and G above. Now, if you've watched all my videos, you may think this is easy, but even if you have watched all my videos, you may find that it's difficult to recall which vitamins, minerals, and supplements help prevent which disease. This is why I like to make videos that present the material from different perspectives. So which is the right answer? Well, here's the quiz question again with the answer highlighted in bold font. So now you know that vitamin B6, vitamin B9, and vitamin C are all beneficial in helping you keep all three organ systems affected by estrogen deficiency healthy. So now let's look at this more closely. Here's a list of the vitamins, minerals, and supplements that offer some benefit in keeping your heart arteries healthy and plaque free. And here's the list of vitamins, minerals, and supplements that offer some benefit in keeping your already dense bones dense. are the vitamins, minerals, and supplements that offer some benefit in keeping your already intact brain intact. If you want the specifics of what each of these do, you'll need to go back to the individual videos on them for each disease. You see, this is why you have to watch my videos in order. So, if we make a big chart of all these vitamins, minerals, and supplements for keeping your already perfect heart, bone, and brain perfect, it would look like this. What I've done here is color code the simple chart to make it easy to see associations. The first column just designates our three items in this category of options, vitamins, minerals, and supplements. The second column lists the products that serve to keep your already plaque-free arteries plaque-free. The third column lists the products that serve to keep your already dense bones dense. The fourth column lists the products that serve to keep your already intact brain intact. And the rows highlighted in any shade of green are beneficial for all three body parts. And that's where you see the three that constituted the answer to the quiz question. Vitamin B6, vitamin B9, and vitamin C. All the rows highlighted in any shade of yellow are beneficial for your heart and your brain. The one row highlighted in orange is beneficial for your heart and your bones. And the one row highlighted in lavender is beneficial for your bones and your brain. All the rows highlighted in any shade of blue are beneficial for only one of your three body parts. And you can see that the vast majority of these vitamins, minerals, and supplements are only beneficial for one body part. There are 24 items in all. 14 of them are beneficial for only one of your body parts. Seven are beneficial for two body parts. And only three are beneficial for all three body parts. If you want to print this chart, you can find it in the link just below this screen, or you can go to my website, which is menopausetaylor.me, and click on the YouTube Video Tutorials tab, hover over it, and charts will come down in a drop-down menu. So, to use vitamins, minerals, and supplements to keep your already healthy heart, bones, and brain healthy, you'd have to get a whole lot of products. And you would not be able to rely on them for anything but maintaining health. The most any of them can do is help prevent these three diseases. And even then, there is so much inconsistency within the industry that you can't even rely on that. So be aware of these limitations. What you have is a large category of multiple items which, in combination or individually, cannot contribute much to prevention of these diseases unless you are far, far from having them. So here's where they fall on our familiar scale. Once again, you have an entire category that is confined to prevention. It has no place in intervention or fixing. If you fuel your menopausal journey with this category alone, 
you're going to run out of gas. So despite the fact that this is a great big category of options, and despite the fact that people tend to regard them with an almost religious faith, they are not sufficient to give you a full tank of gas. If you rely on them alone, you'll run out of gas for sure. That does it for today. Go to menopausetaylor.me to schedule consultations, subscribe right here, and go to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stalk me. <laughs> Next week, we'll discuss herbs. See you then. Bye. <laughs>